So right, this is the front end builder, which we started off with having a look at. Uh, as I roll around, you'll see that there's different colors and, um, and bits and bobs popping up all over the place, right? So the way it's working is that this blue bit is, is the section that encompasses everything. Now within each section, you would have a row which will have columns, all right? So this one, as you can see, has got a double column structure and I can change it quite easily over here. The other little icons that you'll find here and all over on sections, rows, and then these gray ones are the actual modules themselves, right? And that's how you add functionality within uh, within Divi is by adding modules. Wherever you see this little plus button, you can add a new module and that's where you'll see the choice of modules that you get. And those modules are really like amazing. There's, there's a huge variety of, of modules to do all kinds of modern uh, kind of website um, look and feel kind of stuff. Um, and you don't need to know how to code to use any of this kind of functionality. And this is, this is truly the power of, uh, of Divi. It's made this available to anyone without having to code, right? So I'm just gonna go um, and show you on an existing module. So this is just a normal text and that's a blurb module, a call to action. Okay, so the call to action has got a heading, it's got a button. If I wanted to change the button text, it's as simply as just, you know, typing in here, click me. Um, here's the, the, the general paragraph text. Here's, the, here's how you add a link, right? In this case, in this case it's, a, it's an anchor link, which is linking to a, a, a CSS ID called top. But you'll see that in the link, um, I can either just paste in a link here if I want, if I know my link. So if I've gone to the front end, you know, I've copied a link and I want to paste it in. But if I want to link to something on my website here on the right hand side, you'll see there's a little icon that says use dynamic content. That's how I can link to anything on my website. Um, so if I go to, for example, page link, that would then give me a list of, uh, okay, I don't have any pages. <laughs> Therein lies the problem. Um, so, all right, I, don't, I only have one page on the website at the moment. So let me just quickly add another one. Uh, pages you add quickly in the back end. So about us. Just going to publish. Just so that I've got some pages. Um, all right. So also creating pages doesn't add them to your menu. I'll need to show you how to do that in one second as well. Um, I just want to refresh this. Right, so back here to this module. This is my button. But if I wanted to change that link, right, dynamic content, page link. Now I can select any of those pages that I, uh, I've put in. Um, so if I wanted to click it, to, uh, link it to the About Us page, it's as, simply as simple as selecting the About Us page and saving that, all right? New, new window, et cetera, et cetera, all right. So, but now this is the content that is in this call to action module, right? The, the power of this, uh, of Divi really comes in in the design section. So this will allow you to edit any section of this module, the text uh, with fine grained control and, and all sorts of control. The title text, you know, should it be an H2, should it be an H1? What size is it? Should you align at center? If you want to align at center, you just click a button here. If you want to make it all uppercase, um, underline it, strike through. The, the options are incredible, you know, and what size do you want to make the text? Okay, I want to make it 45 pixels, but 45 pixels is going to be too big for mobile. So again, once I've edited a size, like the text size here, when I scroll over it, you'll see that these extra little bits pop up. And the first one here is a mobile settings one, right? That allows me to do fine-grained um, settings. So for tablet, 
I can make this, instead of 45, this could be, for example, 38 pixels. And phone, that's still too big. I want to make it a little bit smaller for phone as well. So that's 34 pixels, right? And I can actually move this aside, make it smaller too, and move it aside so that I can see in real time what my, uh, what my, my heading size is going to look like over here. Right, and that's how you, literally anyone can be a mobile designer without even knowing how to design for mobile or write mobile code. Um, and there's much more, sorry, there is uh, uh, much more in the design section. So, why have you done this? Okay, so title text, body text, button, I can, I can edit every part of that button, you know what I mean? Just changing the background, if I wanted to change the background to red, I can literally just click on it there um, and change it to red. Uh, every aspect of the button is editable here, and of course you can even um, do mobile specific styling for your button. It's that simple. Uh, you can add a little background to it. Let's add a background to this one, just a shadow behind it. All right, sizing, spacing, you can set your spacing uh, by just simply putting in a value here and uh, that'll create padding or margin around. So without having to know how to write CSS, you can do all of these things. Um, there's a lot more that I'll let you play with along the way. The fun one right at the bottom is the animation one as well. Obviously, once you choose an animation, you'll, you'll get a bunch of animation settings as well, speed settings, kind of curve that you want to do. Um, do you repeat it or not, etc. So each animation has its own kind of settings. And, and again, I'll let you play with all of those. And obviously, once, you, once you're happy, all right, there's also an advanced uh, tab as well. This is where you can put in custom CSS, custom CSS IDs and classes for those who know how to write CSS. Um, the visibility is a very useful um, function as well. This is how you can have modules on uh, for um, on on your phone or and tablet, but not on on desktop, or or on on desktop, but not on on phone and tablet. So that's how you can hide modules, etc., from um, yeah, from mobile devices, etc. Um, uh, transition provision, scroll effects. There's yeah. I, again, I'm going to let you play with all of these things. There's lots of fun things. There's little help buttons all over the place as well. Uh, if you click on that help, it's going to give you, you know, an introduction to this case, the call to action uh, module, and uh, yeah. So there's built-in help as well. As you can see, my title changed to the red there. I put the title, not the background that I changed. Um, and obviously, once I'm happy with anything, just to publish it, to remember, click the Save button here at the bottom right. And that'll apply the changes to my website. And now I can exit the Visual Builder and see, right, this is now actually what it would look like. And it'll link to my About Us page. This, uh, this button. Um, uh, how to add other pages to the menu, because obviously I've, uh, I've added other pages, but they haven't appeared in the menu here. Right? Menu is under appearance, menus. That's where you will find, um, it says menus, because by default, you've only got one main menu, but there is the option to create a new menu. Um, and you can assign them. You've got three menu positions. You've got a secondary uh, menu bar and a footer bar. The secondary menu bar is actually that uh, top bar, this green one, so you can put a menu in there as well. Um, and, all right, so how to add pages to my main menu. So let's say I wanted to add the contact us page. I simply tick on that page and click the add to menu button and you can see that it populates here. It's not published though until I click on save menu. When I click on save menu, and then refresh on the front end of the site, you will see that I now have a contact us um, 
link in my menu, menu, which will go to the contact us page, which has nothing on it at this point. So I'm not going to click that. And if I wanted to create a new menu, it's as simple as doing this top menu. And create that menu. I'm going to put the about us link into that menu. And I'm going to assign it to the secondary menu position, which is the top bar. In fact, I'm also going to assign it to the footer. You can assign one menu to multiple, or you can create another menu for your footer. But what you'll see now when I refresh the front end of the website is that there'll be an About Us link that's gone to the, uh, the top here. You we'll probably want to ask me for a bit of CSS to just give you a bit of space there. And there's an About Us link in my footer menu as well that's been created. All right, and that's, uh, that's it in, in a nutshell, how to uh, build websites. Just to remind you that um, uh, how to access the visual builder. So for example, I've created a new page, like the contact us page. If I open it up on the back end like this, you saw me create the page. The, you know, there's nothing here. It's the normal WordPress builder. If I click on use the Divi Builder, that's where the Divi Builder is now going to um, replace the default kind of um, WordPress builder. And when I do that, you'll see that I get these three options, build from scratch, choose a pre-made layout, or clone an existing page. Clone an existing page is obviously useful once you've got a style and, and type of page going that you want to use. But uh, the pre-made layout is also a great way to get you started really, really quickly. Um, and I was using the cosmetic shop. And this is the contact us page. And I'm going to use this layout. Now there, it didn't give me the option to replace the existing content because there is no existing content, right? Doug, we had a question while we were covering off the additional pages. Um, Greg wanted to know how to edit the, uh, how to hide the primary and secondary menus entirely. So when we go back to the, the navigation or the, um, the theme settings, we can, if we can cover that. Okay. So the way to, um, uh, I'll break it down into two page, two bits. For that. So just, that was just to show you how it is to, on, uh, that's on the back end. If you want to use uh, the Divi Builder, it's here on the back end. It's, it's a bit, I prefer this layout. It's kind of, for me, it's easier to, to kind of find the stuff that I want to edit. But a lot of people prefer the front end builder. So when you're on the back end like this, you'll also see a button that says build on the front end. If you prefer the front end, then you're more than welcome to just click on that button. And that'll reload your page in that visual builder that, uh, that I've been showing you. Um, there you go. This is our contact us page. And yeah, obviously you'd want to put in your your uh, contact details, et cetera, et cetera, and then, and then click on save um, when you're happy. Save and I can exit the visual builder. All right, and there's that contact us page um, as it would look to anyone viewing my website.